There you go. So thank you for joining. Um, this will be available for others on the website. Uh, it's great to see people across multiple time zones. I have the privilege of leading the IOTA board over the past year, and it's exceptional uh, group of hardworking individuals um, who care about the culture of our field. Um, as I have learned over the past number of months, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion challenges are different in different regions of the world, in different communities, uh, where people are working in, in various ways to increase and improve the culture of belonging, uh, whether that's related to gender, which is generally top of mind um, and has been sort of at the forefront of the diversity efforts, I think in many countries, but also if we're thinking about making our culture one where everyone feels comfortable and belonging, we need to look beyond gender uh, to race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religion, other aspects where people don't fit the majority uh, look of orthopedics. So, um, that is really what IOTA is about, is, is diversity writ large um, and, and trying to, to change the culture uh, and help people in various regions with their journey. Um, so setting up an organization like this takes time. Jenny's going to talk a little bit about the background of IOTA. I want to give a big shout out uh, to Talissa Trevelyan, who has been uh, there from the very beginning um, as our contracted staff uh, based out of Australia. There's no way you can do an organization um, like this uh, with the various aspects um, without somebody at the helm every day um, keeping track. So uh, that has been probably the difference between a successful and a non-successful start. So thank you. Um, would you like to just pop on the slides and we'll run through our agenda. And after we run through the agenda that we have for you today, we will uh, open it up for a Q&A, any questions or suggestions or ideas. Um, okay, and then we, we, wanna, we wanna start the meeting with um, our acknowledgement that we start our board meetings with, that we acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout the world and recognize their continuing connection to land, waters, and culture. We pay our respect to their elders past, present, and emerging. So just a, a grounding um, in that acknowledgement. And also just want to state the obvious that um, you know our thoughts uh, when we think about international groups now it, it's hard not to think about the, the activities that are going on on the international landscape just want to give a, a, a thought out to those who are in our general culture who are uh, on the forefront of uh, conflict um, in Europe so with that I will pass it on to Jenny Green Thank you very much, Christy. I'm just going to talk briefly about the history of IOTA. I'll take the next slide. Thanks, Talissa. Is that the screen correct? That, that's great. Thanks, Talissa. Um, so IOTA is a, a global collaboration that started in 2019. Um, at, at the time, I was running uh, the Australian Orthopedic Diversity Strategy with the team management team there as the chair of the Women's uh, Orthopedic Surgeons. And I was invited across to the US where I met Christy. And I'd also come in contact with PC Chai, who was a Malaysian president, and Lee Philander Sai, who was the Swedish president and is now the EFORT president. So with the inspiration of, of these women and also um, AJ Johnson, who was the chair and still is of the Diversity Advisory Board of the American Academy, uh, I thought that it would be a great idea to bring us all together and have a more global approach to improving diversity. Um, in fact, to make diversity in orthopedics more diverse. So we started in 2020 with 45 founding members from 30 nations. Uh, thanks to Lisa. And in 2021, we established a board and more recently our vision, mission and strategy. This year, we are almost up to 700 members and we also have a approximately 40 orthopedic associations. Um, our board is actually 12. Um, we are currently getting expressions of interest from the, for a new North American representative and also a new African representative. 
Next slide, please. Uh, we have a large advocacy network. Next slide, thank you. Um, all this really is based on, on the concept that diverse organisations attract the top talent, increase innovation and make better decisions. Next slide, please. And there is a lot of evidence that addressing these barriers to diversity through creating visible role models, minimising unconscious bias in decision making and promotion, increasing flexibility and mentor and sponsorship uh, it have all been shown to be evidence based strategies. Next slide, please. Um, but most of all, diversity in orthopaedics, we believe, will decrease the inequity in healthcare, and that is our, our primary goal. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. All right, Rhonda Marie. Hi, everyone. Um, I've spent the year being the African representative, so I just want to give feedback of what we've done this year. Next slide, please. So at the moment, we've got 41 uh, African members in total, two that are in the presidential line. Um, we have introduced IOTA to COSEXA. So COSEXA is the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa. Uh, it's a big association, as you can see, um, that includes a host of countries um, and is essentially their examination body. Um, so we managed to introduce IOTA via um, a webinar or a sort of Zoom meeting during their annual meeting in December. Um, we've run a, a medical student introduction to orthopedics course um, at Stellenbosch University in South Africa in October of last year. And um, the South African Female Orthopedic Surgeon Society um, has been created and we've held some webinars and started a local mentoring program to improve um, the experience of uh, women orthopedic surgeons in um, South Africa, as well as retain um, those that are interested uh, in specializing in orthopedics. Next slide. So what are the plans for this year? So we need to appoint a new African regional representative. Uh, and we are lucky enough to have had a few applicants, which is great. Uh, of course, we want to continue to increase our membership uh, and network with uh, COSEXA members to discuss um, their issues of diversity, inclusion, and be belonging. And we are doing another introduction to orthopedics uh, for medical students workshop in May of this year in Johannesburg, um, just to be able to get some sort of access to this for, for our inland members in South Africa. Next slide. Thanks. Thanks, Marie. Thank you. Oh, um, so I'm Margaret, I'm the Asia Pacific Regional Representative. So basically it's the purple um, regions for pur purple area. Um, it represents many different countries and then and actually it is in different cultures as well as different ethnicity. Next slide. So we have sent in for the past years, we have sent in an uh, invitation to all the um, diff, um, orthopedic associations in different countries to so ask them to join um, the, the uh, either. So, um, so I didn't really mention the names here, but then we have APOE vice president, the Asian um, of the presidents, the Australian presidents, the Malaysian um, of the association, past presidents, New Zealand and Philippines. And we have a total number of 216 um, members um, from the Asia Pacific region so far. Next slide. Um, for the events, we um, most of them is actually from the Australasia. So we start off with the um, the New Zealand and Australian orthopedic association. So they tend to be more developed in doing um, more of the either um, kind of um, uh, diversity, kind of um, cultural inclusions and and diversities um, uh, um, activities. But um, recently, we also have the APOA um, trying to form the, the forming the women's section, which is championed by our IODA member and as well as, as, as 
AOA, which is the um, president, which is Annette Bollian. So hopefully with that, we'll be able to get more members from the Asia Pacific. It is difficult with the different ethnicity and the culture, but then so, but we're gradually trying to build it up and hopefully with the APOA and um, the Congress this year, we'll be able to, and um, since we're gonna have a section there, we're hoping to, that we can attract more members from there. Next slide. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, sure. next slide. Sure. Um, so we've had meetings with our commercial partners with Stryker and Arthrex to try and improve links um, in terms of diversity with IOTA, and those are ongoing. And then non-commercial, uh, we've sent emails out to all of the European societies. There are some issues around language. Um, we have a symposium planned for EFORT, and we've previously had one with the BOA. Um, and we've also established links with OrthoHub, which is a free platform allowing us to host uh, webinars um, across Europe and a social media drive as well using Twitter. Uh, next slide. Hello. Yes. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, so I'm representing Middle East and North Africa. Um, we're slower than others. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we're still trying to collect data of women in orthopedics uh, in Middle East and North Africa. Uh, we're representing the light uh, green color. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so we uh, made the WhatsApp group uh, trying to collect uh, women, um, which is just a snowball and, and word of mouth. Uh, regional representative of those countries are a bit resistant, uh, but so far Saudi Arabia has the most uh, ladies in orthopedics and we're trying to collect the data from other regions. Um, at least now we're on a WhatsApp group, we're not as organized as others, but uh, we're trying to get through. Next slide, please. Uh, we're trying to get through uh, these uh, common areas to represent IODA and talking about diversity. So my next meeting will be in Tangier, Morocco in March. Next slide, please. Then going to Iraq for uh, the beginning of June to speak about um, some orthopedics and diversity mostly. Next slide, please. And the last meeting will be in uh, Tunisia and uh, also uh, early June, uh, just to try and spread the world uh, gradually through meetings, then to make a full meeting about uh, diversity and IODA hopefully soon. Thank you. Thanks, Talal. Hello, Patricia. I'm, uh, I'm Patricia Fuchs. I'm from Sao Paulo in Brazil, and I represent Latin America. Next, Lisa, please. So Latin America, we have many societies because although it's not a big area in the world, there are many societies because there are many countries. And of course, there is a federation, which is LAUT, which is the Latin America Orthopedic Association. But the biggest society in Latin America is the Brazilian uh, Orthopedic Association, when, which I was past president in 2018. Thank you. Uh, next. So uh, what we, what I done since uh, I started being on the board of IOTA, so I sent letters to all the societies of Latin America, invite them to join, to advertise in their web, uh, websites, which didn't happen to many of them. But because uh, the Brazilian society has a huge visibility, so the partnership with SBOT is good. So we can use our logo in IOTA website because it was already agreed. And uh, SBOT commit to have a new committee to uh, to uh, deal with diversity, which is very good. So Zlauti also has been invited. We, because of the pandemic, we didn't have uh, for the last two years, no meeting from Zlaut. So it's, it's get, getting harder to reconnect everybody, but I believe this year we are gonna get it. And we also advertise IOTA in the Latin American Pediatric Orthopedic Society because we have a, a web a WhatsApp chat, 
which is very helpful. So it's helped to advertise. And I also advertise IOTA in the Federation of the uh, Orthopedic Society from Portuguese language because I was past president and it goes from Portugal to the ex colonies in Africa, Angola, Mozambique, and there's Cabo Verde and Azores. So it also helps to advertise because there's not too many women working in these countries. So the plans for this year is to act during national uh, meetings and international, which I plan to attend. And it is spread the idea of IOTA, I think, to have the engagement, we need to advertise more. And thank you for having me on the board. Thanks. Thanks, Patricia. And Patricia just joined the board the, the last two months. So appreciate your efforts uh, networking from your um, knowledge of uh, Latin America and your past leadership roles. I also just, uh, before we get to Matt, um, who serves as the secretary, I just want to mention the North American um, uh, region. Um, A.J. Johnson um, uh, has worked hard over the past uh, year to, to build that group, um, and we'll be looking for a new North American board member um, over this next few weeks. Um, we've had a number of applications. So there's 215 IOTA members in North America. I see Lori Himstra on the uh, call. There's uh, both the COA leadership and the um, uh, AAOS uh, leadership, a a AOA leadership um, are members of IOTA. Um, and just want to mention that that is a critical piece. If we're going to increase diversity in all aspects throughout the global culture, it is going to take the buy-in of leaders of the various international organizations. Most of the leaders are men. And uh, that is, you know, another good reason to have a, this is a really an inclusive um, organization where we are trying to make change on all fronts and it'll take everyone um, uh, and not just those who are diverse. So we welcome all members and specifically all leaders who are trying to make this change. So um, the AAOS meeting is coming up in the next several weeks uh, and there will be efforts uh, there to highlight diversity in a number of groups, but specifically IOTA will be um, on the podium um, as well as having a a webinar that everyone's welcome to uh, the Saturday prior to the Academy meeting, which is March 19th. Um, and we'll be sure to send that out um, as an advertisement as well. With that, Matt Schmitz, thank you. Thank you, Christy. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Uh, I'm Matt Schmitz from San Antonio, Texas, and I've been honored to be the secretary of IOTA. If we can go to the next slide, uh, Talissa, please. So uh, we've mentioned that we're up to nearly 700 members and uh, I've got them broken out here by the different regions. You can see this was uh, as of uh, 1 February, so slightly updated. Uh, it's not a competition, but Asia Pacific is still leading uh, the uh, number of members thanks to the fantastic work that Jenny has done over the course of uh, setting this up. And so uh, I would encourage everyone on the call to please reach out to friends and encourage them to consider joining as well as we would look to continue to improve these numbers uh, over the next few years. Next slide, please. Some of the benefits include the, the, the diverse community, the mentorship and sponsorship. Uh, we have a fantastic diversity library that's hosted within our website and is updated frequently with new articles relating to diversity. Uh, we've been putting out a quarterly newsletter to highlight not only what uh, some of our members are participating in, but diversity uh, webinars, diversity symposiums that are ongoing. Uh, we have regional reps that uh, supply uh, different updates for what's going on in their region. Uh, and so uh, we, we encourage our members to, to look through those and, and get involved uh, and also reach out to me if you'd like, if you've got something going on in your region that you would like to see highlighted in the newsletter, we're looking for new content uh, on a quarterly basis. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, committee that's been putting together podcasts and webinars. And as we build this over time, uh, this can uh, become a repository uh, for future members to um, uh, use for education purposes. Next slide, please. Please. 
again, going back to the original, I think that the biggest benefit uh, early in the uh, history of this organization is, has been uh, the community that's involved in, 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 in being able to meet new folks. And so this is one of the selling points that I try to use when we're recruiting new members is that it, it gives you a new family to be a part of, uh, of fantastic people that will advocate for diversity on your behalf and on behalf of, of those around you. Uh, and so the number one benefit is, is the community that, that we've created. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, Andrew. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, Andrew Wines, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and it's been my absolute uh, honor and pleasure to be the treasurer for the last 12 months. Uh, next slide. So it's fair to say that uh, we've worked on the smell of an oily rag for the last uh, 12 months. Um, and at the moment, uh, from a financial point of view, we're about $25,000 behind. Um, and predominantly that's been uh, funded uh, very kindly by Jenny and Christy. So our aim over this next 12 months is to be able to get back into the black. So hopefully that will happen by a new donate now button. So uh, for everyone who's listening and for friends and colleagues, um, if you go to the website, there's now a donate now button on the webpage where through PayPal, you can make a contribution to IOTA. We're also very much looking for uh, sponsorship, um, predominantly from industry. So we've got three levels of uh, sponsorship on our prospectus, platinum, gold, and silver all of which give different uh, benefits to our sponsors um, in the form of uh, website articles, uh, newsletter articles, presentation from board members and, and logo on the website. And we've also put together um, an advertising prospectus where um, groups are able to advertise both on the website and the newsletter. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and just to, to add to that before Simon starts, um, just to, to be clear here, uh, Jenny <laughs> has, has put up 99% uh, of the, the money uh, for this organization. So, you know, when you talk about commitment of somebody who starts something uh, and creates a founding group and, and moves forward, any new organization requires the passion of a committed leader. And so Jenny's not only put the time in and the effort in to organize this international collaboration, but also put the money in. So, um, we'll get back into the, the black over time as we now are a 501c3 organization in the United States. So uh, tax exempt for donations from both industry and others. Um, uh, but it does take money to run the day-to-day -day uh, runnings of a, of a major organization. So we'll, another shout out to Jenny. Thanks. All right, Simon. My name is Simon Fleming. I'm the, the social media lead really for uh for Iota, but I've been working very closely with, with Jenny and Talisa, without whom uh, very little would actually get done in the real world. And it's quite uh, pertinent that I, I follow on from the Treasurer's Report because the power of social media allows us to make quite a big impact uh, for uh, a limited expense. Next slide, please. So we have a, a number of platforms that we use, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. They all require slightly different content and they all speak to slightly different communities uh, globally. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but what we're seeing on uh, Facebook, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Instagram, next slide, please. LinkedIn, next slide, please. And Twitter is that actually we're getting quite nice organic growth. People are slowly but surely hearing about us, seeing about the work we're doing. And actually one of our biggest pieces of work that we've been doing is actually amplifying the work of others. Uh, I, very early on, I think we agreed that um, one of the mistakes some organizations make with their, their social media is they try to reinvent the wheel, where actually there's already amazing work being done out there by other organizations who are passionate about a particular uh, focus or characteristic. And so we use our, our networks and our platforms to amplify their work and to support their voices. Uh, next slide, please. And actually, if you look at kind of the numbers, I'm, I'm a qualitative researcher, but numbers do matter. Um, generally, anything over two or three percent is is considered pretty impressive engagement on social media. And actually for Twitter, anything over about one percent is considered, you know, a good effort. And so we are actually getting a decent amount of engagement. 
And what we need to do really is just keep pushing that, keep putting content out and keep amplifying the great work of others because people are seeing what we're doing and we are helping people see what other people are doing, which realistically is our, our raison d'etre. Next slide, please. Um, what's most noticeable when you look at the most engaging things, the people people have cared about the most, is that people find quite personal stories quite powerful. And so it's probably important that we that on Facebook we we reach out to uh, our membership there on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And it's about highlighting the work that people are doing. People seem to really care about that. They want to get that kind of word out there. And I think that's something we can certainly develop um, as we go on. And I would ask all those on, on this call to use your networks and your platforms to amplify the noise that we make, because it's it's often very considered as, as important stuff that we need to get out there. Next slide, please. Going forward, again, it's about amplifying the work of others. And, you know, it was interesting, we've spoken about webinars and so on. And actually, a lot of these social media platforms do give us access to do uh, things like Twitter spaces and Instagram live, which are, are open source we can just host them and have conversations with people around the world. Again, they're entirely free. You run the risk of, of talking to yourself for an hour, but I don't think I've ever really seen that happen because there's always some members of the community awake at some point. And so we might want to consider using that functionality within things like Twitter and Instagram. And one of the things that, that might be useful is, is a lot of the conversations we have when we talk in our meetings is about really not knowing what life is like as an orthopedic surgeon in certain parts of the world. And so there may be a role for giving people in parts of the world that often aren't necessarily listened to or heard as much access to our social media. So they can do a day in the life of, what's it like being an orthopedic surgeon in Saudi? What's it like being an orthopedic surgeon in Hong Kong? Because often you can't be what you can't see, but we can help people see that. And finally, um, it would be quite nice to get some blue ticks. However, the algorithms uh, out there pretty much have have pretty clear requirements. So one of our challenges is going to be getting IOTA onto already verified sources, whether that's website or uh, verified press sources, because that's what Twitter considers to be a credible way of verifying that you are who you say you are. So that's probably our next challenge going forward. Next slide. So Simon, just before you uh, go on, uh, as you end that, yep. um, just, um, you know, I, the IOTA board is made up of officers, as most boards, uh, the regional representatives, which we've heard from, uh, but you're the one person that doesn't fit into either one of those categories. And so maybe just mention your role on the board, um, because I think it's, I think it's really important. Uh, thank you. My, my role on the board is I, I am a trainee, I'm still a resident. Uh, and so I, as best I can, try to bring a a resident perspective to some of the decisions made and and kind of movement going forward I wear a couple of other hats but primarily I, I try and think that's really good but but how does that resonate with with residents going forward and and actually a lot of the advocacy we're seeing is is grassroots it is undergraduates and postgrads and residents doing a lot of this work too and so hopefully in the in the in the future, the plan will be to make the resident voice a little bit, a little bit more visible, a little bit louder in IOTA as well. Thank you. Okay, Caroline. Thanks, next slide, please. Um, so we've had a, a busy year and a bit of webinars. Um, we created some really good links with OrthoHub, which is an English platform. Uh, which has free content and uh, a huge um, community of online users now. Um, we hosted a Creating a Diverse and Inclusive Environment in Global Orthopaedics webinar, which was our first webinar. Then we hosted another one on mentorship and supporting diversity and a very well received one on strategies for advancing your career as an underrepresented minority. We tend to find again the personal stories webinars do the best where people give anecdotes and coping mechanisms as to how they've progressed in their careers. Um, at the AOS in March there was the first global symposium for women in orthopaedics hosted by Jenny 
And then at the um, BOA in September, we also had careers breaks and how to bounce back, which was again, very well received. Um, Australia in November, we had Simon hosting a webinar, another one in Morocco, and then another one with Murray at Caseca. So a huge amount of work from everybody. And thank you very much for everybody's help with those. Future webinars, um, so we're quite keen to um, reach out to other platforms such as Ortho TV, um, look at careers uh, with an orthopaedic panel and make that more interactive as well. And then we're planning an LGBTQ webinar for later in the year. And I think we're quite conscious that it's not only gender, but all aspects of diversity that we want to represent with these webinars. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you for everybody um, in the presentation today. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, you know, building an organization, you know, as I mentioned, takes the passion of a, of a visionary leader, um, uh, Jenny and, and the rest of the founding members to really feel that this was something where we had a gap uh, internationally. We've had everybody working on diversity in their own countries and their own regions, but to, to build an inter international collaboration with a really a curious, focus. What, what is it like um, in Saudi Arabia? What is it like in Hong Kong? And what are the challenges and, and, and what can we build that allows support of, of people in those in the communities? And how can we amplify the message? And again, by having leaders of international organizations to be able to amplify that message and, and develop strategic plans for their own organizations uh, that highlight diversity, I, I think is uh, uh, those are going to be steps in getting where we need to be. So um, when, you, when you set up a new organization, there's so much work that goes on because um, and as I think about the organizations I've been involved with, they've been mature organizations that frankly have sometimes pretty lousy governance um, and structure as bylaws get added on like a patchwork quilt over many decades. So the opportunity to, to build a new organization and start from the beginning with a, a mindful of the structure and the governance of an organization, how it's set up, how the leaders are chosen and being able to set that up from a you know best practice governance from the beginning is important. Um, so having um, a set of bylaws, number one, it's important for 501c3 status, but it's also important to guide the organization, setting up the structure of the board and how board succession occurs. Um, and then, most critical is setting up strategic planning for the organization going forward. What is uh, the guide that, that, that IOTA will move for, forward over the next three years? And so after the first six months of uh, developing a structure, uh, the board came together um, over the last few months of 2021. Um, we sought input from both the board itself as well as the membership related to development of a strategic plan uh, for IOTA. Um, we used an external consultant to help with the drafting and we refined our mission, our vision and added three key goals that will guide us over the next three years. We also developed a set of metrics and objectives underlying each goal that we will be tracking carefully to make sure that we are on track uh, and it's a living document that we will modify going forward. Um, I'll also just mention the more processes that you can put into place for a new organization, the better, because otherwise, as many organizations, they become personality-based. Um, it's hard to get away from some personality, but if there are processes in place, then it's not about what the leader or leaders want. It's about what the organization wants, what the membership uh, and the board want, instead of just being a forceful leader. So let's go to the next slide. This is the backbone of the 2022-2024 IOTA strategic plan, hot off the press one month ago. Um, a vision uh, we're very excited about, a global orthopedic culture in which everyone can thrive. We feel that you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is, is critical, but that really all goes toward building that culture where people feel like they can belong in the field. And we are not there yet as people feel the need to fit into set stereotypes of what an orthopedic surgeon should look like. And that's really our, our vision for the, for the future. Our mission is to champion diversity, equity, and inclusion in orthopedics worldwide. And our three key goals are obviously at the beginning of a new organization, we wanna expand the reach of global diversity efforts. And that's gonna um, align with things around metrics to build the membership 
uh, to build the leadership uh, of organizations as part of the IOTA membership. Um, we want to develop demographic data uh, of orthopedic surgeons and our um, uh, colleagues in the membership, which include industry as a critical partner, trainees, uh, and others that are, are interested in, in orthopedics uh, to highlight the challenges and opportunities that we have in each region um, and really, again, collect data. Um, we want to be able to build out diversity efforts culturally appropriate in various regions. There may be regions that aren't interested in building out the LGBT community, uh, and that may not be where they are right now. Uh, and we may focus more on gender in many regions. We may focus um, on, on race and, and ethnicity in and, and other regions. So uh, we wanna be mindful of that. Uh, and the bottom line is we wanna develop an exchange of ideas with our webinars, our symposium and our, and our, our global connection. The second being uh, we wanna equip IOTA members with the knowledge and tools to create and sustain a diverse, inclusive and equitable uh, environment by again, developing our digital repository of information related to this on our website that can be used by others around the globe uh, to move upon that path. We wanna be able to recruit diverse speakers when we have um, webinars and symposium. And we wanna be able to make sure that we're providing content that will be um, of interest. And then finally, uh, as appropriate for a new organization is develop a sustainable organization. It only lasts as long as there's a sustainable effort. Well, part of that is the strategic plan, but part of it is a, a financial um, strategy. So we're gonna be building partnerships uh, and developing the core finances to be able to continue the organization. Thank you very much. Hi, <clears throat> hi again. Uh, so how to get involved with us? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, most important is, uh, next slide, please. Uh, most important is our website, of course, the IOTA website. You, would, you could find all the updates that you could find about um, uh, the diversity groups. There is the small donate uh, button that is there that you can get involved with. You could find uh, the regional member that is uh, uh, closer to you. You can just click on it and you can contact anybody there. You can see the members from that area. Um, uh, from Middle East, from uh, Asia Pacific, you can choose the member and you can contact that member so easily uh, through our website. You want to share your story or you just want to uh, uh, have a question about that area. Next slide, please. As uh, Simon said, we are found in most uh, uh, social media. So uh, we are on Twitter, next, uh, next slide, uh, LinkedIn, next slide. Uh, Instagram, next slide. We are very active today on Instagram. Uh, Facebook, next slide. Um, or you can just share your story through the hashtag of look like a surgeon, uh, where whatever surgeon, uh, where, wherever you are around the world, just share your story that everybody could get involved. We could get uh, to understand what you're struggling through. Uh, whatever your struggle and diversity being um, as, as uh, what we've been saying, gender, ethnicity, uh, um, um, LGTB, uh, color, whatever you're struggling with, just show us that you look like a surgeon, no matter what shape, size, uh, what <laughs> problem you have, or just struggling like a simple orthopedic surgeon. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you to all the presenters. Uh, that was um, outstanding maintenance of uh, agenda and time schedule. We try to do that in our board meetings as well. There's so much to get through, but to have a, a set agenda for each board meeting um, and move through that quickly. So we have a few minutes left. Um, uh, happy to open it up to anyone for questions, comments, advice, suggestions. Um, those of you who are not on the board or on the board, you know, put your brainstorm caps on and what would you like to see? What could you envision over the next few years as this organization grows uh, related to culture and DEI? Yeah. Either put it in the chat or shout it out. Well, what I think IOTA can do is after having a lot of engagement, and thoughts and exchange ideas and how to change 
especially you know in outside the orthopedic societies to change you know public policies about salaries about rules to get a job and to address this diversity so i think this will be the major goal and inside the world, uh, the orthopedic world try to mentor to address this difference and try to lessen and lessen this you know diversity and try to make a better orthopedic world and doing this may uh, you know um having more more not be a better orthopedic surgeons in a social part and also in the technical part we will have a better orthopedic care which is all we want for our patients so i think there's two big fields to be work on so we need to change the policies and then change the orthopedic world and i think the major goal is to have a better orthopedic care i see a chat from kim templeton i don't know kim if you're um on mic here, but uh, Kim, I, I've known for ages, um, but has been forceful in the medical student um, community in terms of uh, bringing orthopedic education to medical students. Um, you, do you want to amplify your comment on the chat? Thanks so much, Christy. I appreciate that. And I, this is an amazing group, and I'm thrilled to see how much you've done in such a short period of time. As Christy mentioned, yes, I've worked with medical students for quite a while it's because I think especially for diversifying orthopedics, we have to reach out at that level, if not earlier, um, also do a lot of work at the high school and college level. So I think if we, you know, potentially developing a medical student chapter so that they are engaged early on. And so I'm, I'm at the University of Kansas. I think it would be awesome for our students to see how diverse orthopedics can be or may not be in other countries and just have an exchange at that level. We've been working on trying to get medical student organizations across institutions, at least in the Midwest, to talk to each other. Can't imagine how much education would occur if you could get medical students across the world to talk to each other and to encourage each other, whatever their definition of diversity is, to go into orthopedic surgery. Thanks, Kim. Um, any other comments on that? Any? I see people from different regions, um, men, women, um, others. Anybody uh, want to amplify the, the challenges that are key in their region or any, any thoughts? Would love to hear. I was going to echo um, Kim's comments and, and, you know, that's we've got some different programs here in the states that are trying to reach out. To younger generations and so if other people feel that same way i would encourage uh, them to you know take the iota website out to the medical students to encourage the students to join it's a free organization um, it costs nothing to join uh, and, and it links you up to this fantastic community and so we i ask everyone on the call to please amplify that message at their in their respective regions and uh, to their students deborah see your hand up yeah, I was just going to say the same, really. I think that uh, the BOA, amongst other institutions, has been reaching out to the medical student societies, uh, and we need to push the diversity agenda there as well. So, yeah, I'm all for I'm all for that. And Deborah, just, you know, again, a shout out to you. You know, you're moving into the presidency of the BOA. So that this is where change happens. Right. So you you now you don't look like a typical orthopedic surgeon and you now have a platform uh, you should, right? That's what we're going to change the definition of what uh, an orthopedic surgeon looks like. But uh, historically, that has not been um, your your uh, profile there. So looking forward to what you can do um, with that platform to raise awareness. So congratulations. No pressure there then. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> the world on your shoulders. Along with Laurie, mind you, we're going to be I see, yeah. that. Yes, so. we'll do the same. Laurie, actually, you're currently the COA president right now, right? No, nope. are you in incoming? June. incoming? You come in in June. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Again. No, and I think I'll just add, like, um, I really feel that IOTA's done really well partnering with other organizations. Like, there's so many organizations, right? Like, how many organizations are you a member of? And it, it becomes overwhelming. And so, I think kind of this sort of 
insinuating has bad connotations, but working with all these other organizations and so that IOTA is, is everywhere it has been a really great strategy. So for example, we have a webinar coming up soon with uh, in partnership with Isakos, and that's been great. So now it now IOTA can spread throughout Isakos. So kudos on that. I think we want to partner. I think you're right. Um, we, we want to be able to amplify others' messages. Um, you know, and there are a lot of there are a lot of different groups in the in diversity space. So partnerships, but also coming together whenever we can um, and building, you know, so that we're not redoing the wheel completely. Um, so we'll continue to work on that. I'd just like to also welcome Katerina, who is the, the president uh, in Austria, correct, ah. Katerina? Wow, wonderful. Look at all this high, the, power, high power leadership. The audience among us may recognize that surname, um, Chiari, um, and we have at least five orthopedic presidents past and present on this call. So thanks everyone for contributing and your leadership. Thank you very much. Um, I will uh, host the Austrian orthopedic meeting in 23. And uh, it's already for sure that we will have a, a session on uh, gender and diversity. And uh, I will be proud if I happen to invite some of you to give a lecture there, even if it's online, but I'm planning on this. Congratulations. We are not obligated to stay on the phone until the hour, so, uh, but we will continue to, to stay on. If anyone has any suggestions or comments, Jenny, were you about to say something? I was just going to ask firstly, Temi, and then make maybe Claudia Arias about their regions and what is happening what they are doing or how they feel that IOTA could help firstly in Africa for Temi and um, more so in South America for Claudia. Temi, are you happy to, or Claudia, did you want to make a comment? Hi, uh, I'm sorry for the delay, that was really late today. So yes, we are just finishing yesterday a uh, new Congress, we were, uh, Organizing here in Lima, uh, we are having a lot of plans. We have a meeting with all uh, women, a lunch, a nice lunch, so to share ideas. Uh, in Peru, we are organizing some courses. So we are making some practical things like a Calaveri lab, Calaver labs that is uh, already coming. We are we have this meeting in SLART in Cartagena is next week. So we are uh, we are going to meet one. Uh, Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico. So we want to have a meeting and just to organize, to share some ideas and maybe we can mm -hmm. have some projects. Any case we're going to share and we, we are going to keep talking about this. So it's coming a nice meeting next week in Colombia. Thanks Claudia. I see Tammy, but I she may not be on. I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know. Yeah, Claudia, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the information. Wonderful. All right. Any any additional comments? If not, we'll wish you a good rest of your weekend. Thank you very much for participating and we'll continue to grow and keep everyone informed on what IOTA is doing to try and help. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Nice Great weekend. Good to see you, everybody. Great to see you, everyone.